Welcome to worship for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. For those who might like to follow along with the bulletin for worship, those who are members or friends of St. Peter should have received one in their email this past week, or you can go to our website, stpetersaintclair.org. Before we begin worship today, let us take a moment just to center our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we, we confess, confess that, that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your Spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. So this is a time that the young and young at heart um, get to hear a special message. So this week, um, past, in a couple of minutes, Pastor Ken will be reading a parable about weeds and wheat growing together. And so as I was thinking about this text this week, I was thinking about the flowers in our garden again. Um, Pastor Ken and I planted a bunch of tulips a couple years ago, and we've noticed that some of those tulips are moving more either by animals or wind or whatever the seeds may do um, and we've noticed that there are some places that we just don't like those tulips growing because they block other plants from growing or they um, suffocate some other plants or they just don't look right right there or they block our view from some plants that we really want to see in those places and so as I, I was thinking about these weeds and wheat, I was thinking about how sometimes, um, depending on who the gardener is, the flower is a weed, or it's a flower that we like to look at. And some of those flowers grow in places that we don't want them to, or take over in places that we don't want them to. And so what does that look like in God's family? Well, it doesn't. God treats us all with love and mercy and grace. And at the end of the day, each of us have that ability to be both weeds and flowers. We can be the pretty things that we want to look at and see, and we can be the things that take over in spaces that we don't want them to be. And so we kind of have to treat each other with that respect and that love and that grace that God gives us, because at any given moment, we could be a weed or we could be a flower. And at the end of the day, we all want that love and that grace. And that's what God extends to us, whether we're acting like a weed or a flower. And so may you know God's grace and God's mercy in the times that we feel like weeds or we experience other people being weeds. And may you know that love and that grace when you feel as beautiful or as wonderful as a flower and when you're experiencing others to be a flower too.
Now the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus tells a parable about the coexistence of good and evil in this world. God's judgment will remove all evildoers and causes of sin, but not until the end of human history. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Like last weekend, today's sermon begins on the Stibe family farm in northwest Ohio, except that instead of focusing on soil, we're going to focus on wheat. Now, I don't know of any farmer who likes having weeds in their crops. And there are a few things that farmers can do to control the growth of weeds in their fields, and one of those is a handy-dandy tool. It's a good old-fashioned hoe. When my brothers and I were growing up, we often spent at least a few days each summer out in the soybean fields hoeing weeds. After soybeans reach a certain height, it's really the only way to get rid of any weeds. And unlike the householder in the parable we just heard, letting the weeds grow alongside the soybeans was definitely not an option, at least not on our farm. Never do I remember Dad saying, oh, just let the weeds grow with the soybeans until harvest. In fact, I can't say I've ever heard a farmer who said, just be patient with those weeds and let them grow. And yet that is what happened in this parable we just heard. The householder insisted on letting the weeds grow alongside the crop until harvest. Now, there are a couple of clues to interpreting this particular parable. The weeds Jesus referred to were probably a specific kind of weed called darnel. It's a weed that looks an awful lot like wheat. That is, until harvest when the heads of the wheat droop and the darnel stays straight up. But during the growing season, it would have been difficult to tell the two apart. The other problem is that regardless of what type of weed is involved, it can sometimes be difficult to pull up a weed without disrupting the crops around it. In other words, try and pull the weeds too soon and you'll either mix up the weeds and the wheat or end up pulling the wheat out with the weeds. All of which means, at least for the purpose of this parable, that a bit of patience is necessary. Which is difficult for us human beings, whether we're farmers or not. Few of us who are hearing this today have much to do with weeds and wheat on a regular basis, but we do have much to do with other people. And as we interact with other people, we often deal with the issue at the heart of this parable coexistence of good and evil in the world. 
When it comes to good and evil, we often view it in terms of two distinct categories. A person or their actions are either good or evil. They are either weeds or wheat. Except that the distinction is not always that simple. In reality, both good and evil coexist in people and their actions. The problem is we often don't wait to figure this out. For we are quick to judge. And not only are we quick to judge, we are quick to take action. We live in a time in which we have been especially quick to judge. We judge individuals. We judge groups of people. We are quick to dismiss the opinions of those with whom we disagree. And that's if we even give another person the chance to express their viewpoint. Because if they identify with a particular political party or movement or cause, or if they're of a particular skin color, race, or sexual orientation, we may have already judged them. And that's without hearing them out first. For we are quick to judge all protesters of a given cause based on the actions of a few. We are quick to judge all who work in a given occupation based on the actions of a few. And my gosh, we have become so quick to judge one another that people are hurting, even killing each other over face masks. In our quickness to judge and our quickness to act, we take away any opportunity to do something compassionate is listening to another human being, or to learn from those different from ourselves, or to see in others what's really going on beneath the surface. And we deny the truth about ourselves and others that we are all, like it or not, both weeds and wheat, not one or the other. Like the field in which both weeds and wheat grow alongside each other, there is the capacity for both good and evil within each of us. And likewise, there is both good and evil in the world around us. And if we're honest about it, it is sometimes more difficult than it first appears to name it, let alone figure out what to do about it. So what should we do? Should we just go around ignoring evil? The answer is no, of course not. And there are times when we can conclusively point to evil in the world. We can conclusively point to evil within a person, and in those cases we must name it and confront it. But at the same time, this parable tells us that God alone is the ultimate judge of good and evil. Which means that sometimes we human beings get it wrong. It also means that it is not up to us to rid the world of sin and evil on our own. That is up to God alone. So in the meantime, we are first called to confess our own sin, just as we did at the beginning of worship. We are called to see the weeds growing inside of ourselves, both as individuals and communities. Then we are invited to trust in God's gracious forgiveness. But there's more. The parable challenges us to be patient, just as the householder was patient and just as God is patient. God's ways, once again, are different from what we would expect. God is patient enough to let the weeds grow among the wheat. And if God can be patient, then we can be freed from the impossible task of identifying evil and ridding the world of it totally on our own. Instead, as one commentator suggests, the God who is glimpsed in this parable models for us an infinite patience that frees us to get on with the crucial business of loving or at least living with each other. This is our call as followers of Jesus Christ, to love others, to live with them, even those with whom we disagree, even those whose way of life we disapprove of, even those whom we have great difficulty loving. No, it's not easy, but we can do so trusting in the one who loves us unconditionally and who will one day at last cleanse the world of all sin and evil so that we will all shine like the sun. So I've never known a farmer to be patient with weeds in their crops, 
but we believe in a God who is patient with the weeds in and among us. And for that, we can be grateful. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways, that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways, especially in our nation and in nations around the world, North and South Korea, Syria, and Afghanistan. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way, especially those affected by COVID-19, those on our prayer list, and those we name before you now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. Help us to find ways to do this safely during this pandemic. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Go 
in peace, Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.